Hello, Hi. welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to be talking about the year six key stage two arithmetic paper. We're going to do a walkthrough of each question and talk about how to solve each one with the strategies that the year six teachers would use to solve these questions. So let's get into it. Okay, so this video is actually going to be in two parts. So the first part is going to be question 1 to 18, and then the second part is going to be the second part of the um, test. The second part of the test is usually the trickier half. So number one, 6,000 add 90. So this is going to call upon the children's understanding of place value, and they should just be able to add 90 to 6,000, which will give them 6,090. And it's important that they put their answer in that answer box for them to get the mark. Okay, number two, again, addition, we would want to use the, col the column method for this. So 8,275, add 82, and we add downwards. And then we pop our answer again in the answer box. And just remember to put a comma there to show that it's, we're working with the thousands. Number three, 826 equals 800 add something equals six. Again, this is testing place value and the children should be able to recognise that I have my hundreds column, my tens and my ones. And I'm looking at the value of that digit there and that is 20. Okay, now we've got a missing number question here. So the children will need to work out what this number in this box is. And we know that something add five equals 341. So here the children will need to use the inverse to work out what that is. So they'd need to do 341, take away five, and they could possibly do that mentally, or they can count back using any of those um, mental strategies. So they could draw a number line here and have 341 and count back five, one, two, three, four, five, or they could do the column um, subtraction, so, but I think it's probably easier just to do it mentally. So 341, 340, 339, 38, 37, 36. So it's going to be 300. And 36. They could always check their answer by adding, seeing what uh, 335 add 5 would be, and that should give them 341. Okay, number 5, 9 times 41. So a couple of different strategies they could use to do this. They could partition 40 and 1, and then do 9 times the 40 and 9 times the 1, or 41 times 9, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 4 is 36, and our answer, 369. Okay, now number 6, adding decimals. Now, this is a question that sometimes children get stumped with as we have a different um, amount of decimal places after the decimal point. So the best thing to do here with this number is to align the decimals. So 5.87 add 3. 0.123. It's always good to remind the children that the decimal um, point should line up. You could almost say like the buttons on a shirt. And then in this place here, a zero needs to go as a placeholder. Zero and three is three. Seven and two is nine. Eight and one is nine. Five and three is eight. I add my decimal point and I put my answer in my box there. Okay, number seven, 180 divided by three. Now, children should be able to recognise that 180 is in fact a multiple of um, three. If they know that, if they, you can use their known facts, we know that six times three is 18. So they would know that 60 times three would give us, one. Um, sorry, 60 times three would give us 180. So 180 divided by three would give us 60. And again, similar question here, 120 is a, a multiple of 12. I know that I need to times 12 by 10 to get 120. So 120 divided by 12 is going to give me 10. And number nine, 
anything times by zero is always going to be zero. That's just something that um, children need to know and remember. Okay, number 10, 91 divided by seven. So for this one, I'm going to use the bus stop method. So I will then see how many times seven goes into nine. I know that goes in once and my remainder is going to be two. So my remainder becomes the tens of um, the next column. Seven goes into 21 three times. My answer is 13. Number 11, 87 subtract 65. So again, there are lots of different methods ch children could use for this. Subtract the um, tens, subtract the ones, or like we did before, just a simple column method. And we would get 22. Now for this next one, Number 12, 602 subtract something equals 594. So here we've got a missing number problem. Now for this one, I would I would say we aren't going to add because our, our number isn't getting bigger. What we need to do is work out what this number is here. So what we need to do is we need to subtract 594 from 602. So we can see what we have added onto it. Two take away four can't do. I can't borrow from my zero, so I need to go to my hundreds column. That's going to become 10, which then becomes nine. And then I put my, um, my one as my 10 for this number. 12 take away four is eight. Nine take away nine is zero. Five take away five is zero, so my number is eight. They also could have done, um, could have gone from 602 and counted on to see how many it was to get to um, 594. Okay, number 13, 1,210 divided by 11. And again, this, um, this question, children can use their knowledge of their multiples, so their 11 times table. 11 times 11 is 121. So therefore, I'm, I, what I need to do is um, times this by 110. And that will give me my answer. Okay, number 14, 25.34 times 10. Now, this is something that children usually get a little bit confused with when we are multiplying and dividing by 10, 100, and 1,000. A way that they can do this is by simply just drawing onto their um, paper a place value grid. So if I have my tens, my ones, my decimal point, tenths, hundredths, whatever. So I've got 25.34, and I'm timesing my number by 10. So my digits are going to be moving to the left and because I'm timesing by 10 they're each going to move one place so I know that my answer is going to be 253.4 now number 15 as soon as I see my brackets I know that this is going to be bid mass or bod mass so brackets, B stands for brackets, I stands for indices, so that's going to be squared numbers, D is for division, M in multiplication, A is addition, and S is subtraction. So this is the order in which I need to do my calculations. So I can see brackets there straight away, so I know I need to work out whatever's in my brackets first. And I know that 30 take away 24 equals six. And then I'll need to do 60 divided by six, which I know will give me 10. A misconception here is that um, children might not do what's in the brackets first. They might do 60 divided by 30 and subtract 24. It's just important to know the order of operations. Okay, number 16, three cubed. 
So what cubed means is I take a number and I times it by itself three times. So if, if n is my number, I would need to do n times n times n. So in this situation, it's three cubed. So three times three times three. I know that three times three equals nine and nine times three equals 27. And the next one, 101 times 1,000. Again, I can draw my place value grid. So I know that I have my hundreds, tens, ones, and I know that I've got 101. And I'm timesing my number, so my number's going to, my digits are going to move to the left. And I'm timesing, timesing by 1,000, so they're going to move three places to the left. So one, two, three, one, two, no, sorry, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And then I need to fill in my zeros as placeholders, one, two, three. So I know that I am working with 101,000. And then the last one, number 18, 20% of 3,000. So an easy way that I can do this, there's lots of different ways to do percentages, which I'll explain in a minute. But I know to find 10%, I need to divide by 10. So I need to do 3,000 divided by 10, which gives me 300. And I need to know what two lots of 10% is going to be. So I need to do 300 times by two, which gives me 600. Another way I can do this, and it works when we've got harder percentages, is you can put your percentage into a fraction, so that's 20 over 100, and then you divide by the denominator and multiply by the numerator, which is really similar to what we've just done here. But this method works say if you've got, if it's not a multiple of 10. So I put my answer in here is 600.